Maybe it was Nia Stokey. Now I want to do another example of a forgotten piece of black history. And I want to thank one of my Instagram followers, Kin171, because she posted something that told me about this story. So I found this site called ancientorigins.net, which has uh, the fullest uh, count possible. So here it goes. The amazing story of Yosuke, the forgotten African samurai. Samurais are among the most enduring symbols of Japanese cultural heritage, thus unsurprisingly most samurai were Japanese. There are, however, examples of non-Japanese who became samurai as well. The most famous Western example is the English sailor William Adams, 1564-1620, who came to Japan in 1600 and was able to rise through the ranks to eventually become a samurai. But one of the most ex- surprising examples would probably be an African by the name of Yosuke, who was made by the Japanese a samurai by the Japanese Damayo Oda Nobunaga after taking on the role of his wait, okay, 1534 to 1582 after taking on the role of his bodyguard. Yasuke was brought to Japan in 1579 by Jesuit missionaries and gained the attention and interest of Japanese noblemen of the Japanese noblemen. Yasuke's origins are shrouded in mystery. He was probably born between 1555 and 1566, but even this is not certain. Historians are not even sure of the origin of his name though it is most likely the Japanese form of his original name. According to one source, he have may have been a Makua from Mozambique. It has also been suggested that he was from Angola or Ethiopia. Additionally, he may have been a European-born slave from Portugal. That's also possible. Whatever his origin, Yasuke first appears in history in 1579 and is as an attendant of the Jesuit missionary Alessandro Valignano coming to Japan to visit the missions that have been set up there. Yasuke was, most, Yasuke was most likely a slave. Yasuke's black skin generated a lot of interest from the native Japanese, and many are said to have come to see him at the church which the Jesuits had constructed in Kyoto. This commotion caught the interest of the daimyo, Lord Nobunaga, who asked for an audience with him. Nobunaga apparently was skeptical that Yusuke, Yasuke's black skin was genuine and had him remove his shirt and rub his skin to show that it wasn't ink. Nobunaga was nonetheless impressed by Yasuke's height. Just to uh, give you a little insight, we've all seen that racist ad where that black guy gets put in the washing machine and has the black washed off him. This stuff shows that that attitude goes way back. Anyway, Nobunaga was nonetheless impressed by Yasuke's height. He is recorded to have been over 6 feet, 182 centimeters tall, in an era where most Japanese men were closer to six to 5 feet tall, 152 centimeters. This height would have made him very imposing to most indigenous inhabitants of the islands. Nabunaga soon made Yosuke his retainer and bodyguard. He was eventually made a samurai in 1581 and stationed at Nobunaga's Azuki castle. After this, Nabunaga would invite Yosuke to dine at his table, an unusual privilege even for a samurai. He was also made the daimyo sword bearer with his own katana. A katana is basically a Japanese blade. During this time, he learned to speak Japanese fluently as well. The end of his samurai career. Yasuke's career as a samurai would not last long. In 1582, Nobunaga's general, Hide, Mitsuhide, uh, started a coup to overthrow him. Mitsuhide, sto- Mitsuhide stormed the temple where Nobunaga was staying in Kyoto. Nobunaga, convinced of his imminent death at the hands of his treacherous general, committed seppuku, ritual suicide. And that's one, another thing interest, related to Japanese culture, the obsession with suicide. A seppuku involved driving a, uh, a katana straight through your gut, Ugh, very grisly. After Nobunaga's death, Yasuke fled back to the Azuki castle and entered the service of his son, Odu Nobutada. His son, however, also committed suicide after suffering death at the hand, after suffering defeat at the hands of Mitsuhide. Mitsuhide was not very impressed with Yasuke and dismissed him as a beast and not a true samurai. The reason for this was that rather than committing honor suicide, the norm after defeat in Japanese culture, Yusuke apparently... Actually, I say that's the example of sanity. I mean, there's no point in him killing himself when he knows that the enemy isn't going to kill him. I mean, as Paul Mooney said, we don't commit suicide. <laughs> for God's sake. This is the... Uh, I mean, it may seem glamorous in Japan, but killing yourself just because you lost does not isn't honorable. Not really. Yasuke apparently offered his sword to Mitsuhide following Western custom. It was undoubtedly because of this rejection that Yasuke returned to the service of Valignano and soon returned to obscurity. The Jesuits, however, were glad to see that he had survived and thanked God for his return. Uh, 
Okay, here's a little bit more about African Japanese content. There is little indisputable evidence for an African presence in Japan before Yasuki, although there are some historical examples which suggest the possibility of African Japanese contact. There is a Japanese proverb which says, For a samurai to be brave, he must have a bit of black blood. It is uncertain, of course, whether this is referring to people with dark skin or some other meaning of the word black. It is possible that the expression black blood could be completely unrelated to someone who is of black African descent and have a very different meaning in Jap ancient Japanese culture. The one problem with the hypothesis, however, is that the color black in Japanese culture is associated with fear, death, and sorrow, among other similar concepts. It is possible the ancient Japanese believed that bravery required these qualities, but it is not necessary to assume that they did, as more likely the Japanese didn't associate these qualities with bravery. It would probably be yet another quality associated with the color black. I mean, that is true that in different cultures, different colors mean different things. I mean, one of the things that in the Western culture we often refer to East Asian people, Japanese, Koreans, and Chinese as yellow. But yellow also means cowardly, and that's not something to be adhered. I don't think any Japanese person or East Asian person would define themselves as yellow according to the Western idea of yellow. <laughs> Another figure in Japanese history is considered by some to be of African descent is Sakonoye no Tamarano, a warrior who claimed to be considered a, a paragon of warrior virtues. He lived during the Heian period from about 758 to 811 and was a Paris guard of Emperor Kamu. Okay, well that's about the end of the article. And just a little thing that I would add in, that apparently Emperor... Uh, what was it? That, uh, Nobunaga would also claim that Yasuke had the strength of ten men. Well, I hope that you found this little tidbit of African history interesting. Please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. I'll leave the PayPal and the donation if you want to support this channel. Peace, family.